Hello, my name is Brad Huddleston. Today I'm going to show you how to run a crystal plasticity code. Now crystal plasticity is essentially a simulation where you're tracking each grain in a material individually so that you can determine how much those grains are rotating and so how much you might be affecting the anis anisotropy of the material. And we're going to run this simulation in Abacus. So we're going to get this crystal plasticity model from the ICME website at icme.hpc.msstate.edu. And crystal plasticity exists between two length scales, essentially. It's bigger than a micron, so it's bigger than the micro scale, but it's not quite, it doesn't have the capability of simulating macro scale things because grains are still fairly small. So it actually exists at what we call the mesoscale. So if you click on this link under Material Models for Mesoscale, you will find a, a link to the crystal plasticity, and it's this crystal plasticity finite element model. So this CPFEM has actually been implemented into Abacus as a user material. So it exists in this UMAT file right here. So we're going to save this first. I'm going to make sure that these are lowercase just to match with what we have. And you can save all of these in one place uh, where you want to do the simulation. So there's the user material file. And it's also going to need these other five files as inputs. So uh, go ahead and download each of those. Um, and then we'll talk about what each of those are. Okay, so now we've got all the input files. Now we can take a look and see what each of them do. The first file we're going to look at is actually the UMAT file. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And this is a pretty, uh, pretty big piece of code, as you can see, um, about 7,000 lines. But there's only a little bit that we actually need to edit, and it's right here at the top. So you scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see this line that says File Path. This needs to be edited to wherever you're going to run the path, to wherever you're going to run your simulations. So in my case, I'm actually going to end up running these at this directory here. But just set that to um, what, what you'd like. And then the other thing you can change is this root name. Uh, this root name will tell it which XTALI file, which we'll get to in a minute, but it'll tell it what this first part should be, what the prefix should be. We're going to leave that the same uh, because it won't matter for, for this simulation. So that's all you should need to do to the UMAT file. So we're going to close that and we're going to move on to this file, this input file. So this input file uh, does two, two things here. Um, one, one of the things that it does is set a bunch of parameters that control how the simulation is solved. So that's a lot of what these things are. It's just solver parameters. And so we're not going to worry about those. The defaults will work fine for that. The other thing it does is it tells you the input for a couple important files. And it tells you what kind of crystal that you're going to be using. So on this first line, uh, this first number corresponds to what type of crystal. You can see here, one is FCC, two is BCC, three is HCP, and the second number is the number of grains. So we're going to use 500 grains, and we're going to use FCC. So along with that, we need this single crystal input file, which is FCC.SX. So this has the name of that right there. And then finally, this is the file name, uh, the prefix for this texture.txti file. So this is telling it where to find that file. 
So if you don't mess with the defaults, all of this should work just fine. Um, but just so you know, that's what those, uh, those files do, those names there do. So next, let's take a look at this FCC file. This is actually where a lot of your material parameters exist, almost all of them, in fact. So first of all, you'll have your single crystal elastic constants. And so those need to be specified right here at the top, and those are in megapascals. You can also see here thermal expansion coefficients, and then you have information about what kind of slip systems are going to be active in this simulation. So you can see here we have listed two different modes, a slip, the regular slip mode in an FCC crystal and the twin mode in an FCC crystal. But you see that we've specified that the number of modes is only going to be one, and we're just going to use this first one. So we're just going to be concerned with the regular slip in an FCC crystal, which is typical. Unless you're going at high rate, you typically won't see a lot of twinning happen in FCC materials. So this will work fine. Now there's a couple other material constants that you'll need. One is right here, and this is the drag coefficient. This essentially tells you how fast the dislocation is going to move under an applied stress. And this is, if you watched my previous video on uh, dislocation dynamics, the drag coefficient is actually the inverse of the dislocation mobility. And so it's a, one of those quantities that you can get from lower length scale simulations. In this case, you'd have to go all the way down to a molecular dynamics simulation. <clears throat> and you can, uh, you can actually get that using the, one of the previous videos that I did uh, and doing a study on the stress on the dislocation velocity. The other parameters that you need to know are these first three here. And these are the Voci hardening law parameters. This essentially tells the model how the material is going to harden on the slip system. And these can also be gathered from lower length scale simulations, in this case, dislocation dynamics. And essentially you just fit the Voci hardening law to the dislocation dynamics output. Um, so you can do that at lower length scales. Also, a lot of these parameters can be found uh, in the literature, and so you can find them from there as well. So that's most of what you need to know about the, uh, that's all you need to know about the FCC file. Uh, so now we'll move on to the texture file. So essentially, all this file is is a list of the Euler angles for each of the grains that we're going to be concerned with in our simulation. At the top, we tell it that we're going to list 500 grains, then we have these two zeros, and after here, it's just Euler angles. So you can edit this to change the number of angles, or, or change the number of grains, or change the angles, uh, or anything like that. But we're just going to leave it at the default for now. Now these other two files that you downloaded are actually just constants that the code needs to run. So these just define what a lot of the constants are um, and what they, what they do. So you don't need to be worry about those either. So there's one more file that we're going to need, and that is actually the input deck to run these. And just for ease, we're going to borrow this uh, Calculix input because it's very similar to Abacus. So we're going to take this, we're going to copy that into a new file. We're going to save this as single element.imp. We're going to make sure that it is also in all types. And there's a little bit that we want to change in here. First of all, you can see that the model itself is very simple. We're going to be running with a perfect cube and it's just a single element. And so then it's set up so that it's going to apply a uniaxial tension to that cube. And you can see here in the material definition we've specified that we're going to be using a user material. So what I'm going to change is the step. I'm going to force this to run at least 20 steps so that we get some good data throughout the whole curve whole stress strain curve. And we're going to run this out to about 30% uh, strain, engineering strain. Alright, so that's the input file. Now we have all the files that we need to actually run. 
you can see all of them here in, in my folder. Now, I don't actually have Abacus on my computer, um, but I'm going to use it on, uh, on the Mississippi State computer uh, where uh, I'm doing this for. So I'm going to copy that folder over, and then over here on one of the Mississippi State computers, I'm going to change into that directory. And you can see now I have all of those files there. Now actually running this is very simple. You simply say abacus job is single element with no extension and then you say user is this umat xtile.f and when you hit that it's going to submit the abacus job and start running it but it'll return right away but the job will still be running so you can tell where the job is by doing this tail dash f on the log file and that'll tell you where it is in the simulation so you can see it finished compiling and now it's running the preprocessor and now the standard and so it'll tell you right there when the simulation is done All right, and so with that, our simulation is done. Now, if you have Abacus, you can easily just post-process this and look at the results uh, in Abacus CAE. Since I don't, what I'm going to do is just look at this ODB in Insight. So I'm going to copy that back to my computer. And open up Insight. Then here, I'm going to open from the folder where I ran the simulations. There, where I copied it to, I should say. Make sure it's finished transferring. It has. And I'm going to load all parts of that file. doesn't look like it actually loaded all parts for me. So let me try that again. I'm going to do that and load all parts. There we go. Now we can see we have our cube geometry. All I want to do here is show you the stress strain curve. So I'm going to do a query and I'm going to pick the uh, stress in the z direction because um, that's the d direction that we're deforming it and the strain in the z direction and then I will create that Oops. there we go hmm. There we go. All right. So now we can see what the stress looks like over that strain. You see it's fairly soft. Um, and it goes from yields around uh, 10 megapascals and goes up to about 40. So with that, you've actually run a simulation using crystal plasticity in Abacus. Thanks for watching.